Hey, how's it going? My name's Tony and I want to help you learn how to design t-shirts and other things even if you have zero design experience. Today I'm going to show you how to make a mermaid scale pattern in Adobe Illustrator and this is going to be one that you're going to be able to use over and over again because we're going to add it to the swatches. It's going to be pretty simple so let's just jump right into it. All right, we're in Illustrator and we're gonna make a scale pattern that we can use to make like a mermaid design or something like that. Maybe you can make a fish design. The first thing we wanna do here is grab our ellipse tool and double click on the artboard and I'm gonna make a two inch by two inch circle. I'm gonna make sure there's no fill in here and then I'm gonna go to my stroke palette and give this an eight point stroke. Then I'm going to take my scissor tool here and I'm just going to click one, two, three points and all the scissor tool is doing is it's cutting these segments of the line and you'll find the scissor tool over here with the eraser tool and the knife and the keyboard shortcut is C. So once I have that I'm going to take my selection tool, select both of these objects here and then I'm just going to drag them down below the bottom half of the circle. I'm going to come over to this corner till I see the icon change to the rotation icon. Hold down shift and we're going to give it a 180 degree rotation. So now that I have that done I can grab all these objects and I can go object expand fill and stroke. Okay. And now these are actually outlined instead of just a stroke around the uh, around the line that we made. So now we're going to take either one of these sides and move it over so that we have something that looks like this. Then with make sure your smart guides are on, which they should be by default. With your smart guides on, you're going to hold down shift with the selection tool and just butt these things right up against each other till they just intersect. I'm going to select both of these with the selection tool and then group them, object group. Select everything, then we're going to go to our align palette and we're going to horizontal align center. Now we can move this up. Now if I do this to where it intersects, you'll notice that there's gaps here and that's not good. So we just want to move it up a little bit into this object. And now we can select those again and ungroup them. And that's going to be important for the next step when we make our pattern because we might need to make some adjustments to get things to line up. So now we're going to go object, pattern, make. And we're doing a five by five grid. I'll click OK here. And let's see, when we zoom in close, you'll notice that these don't quite line up that way. So you'll notice our original here is in a blue box and that's so we can make our adjustments. So we can just grab our selection tool and select this top object here and move it. I have to move mine up a little bit. And now you'll see that that space is gone. Just I push the up arrow one time and that did the trick. You might need to try some, make a little more adjustments on yours. It just depends. And these look okay. So with that done, we're going to hit done up here and it's going to add to your swatches palette. It's going to add that new pattern that you made and to save this so you can open it in other documents you're gonna have to come to this little flyout menu here and you're gonna have to save swatch library as and then what no, actually what you're gonna have to do is come over here to the swatch libraries menu save swatches and then you can give it a name and save it and then when you want to open it in a new document then you come over to that same little menu here and then you go to user defined and whatever you named it that's where it will be so now that we have our pattern, now if you want to, you can make this smaller or bigger when you make your pattern, but for now, this will be fine. 
for our purposes. So now I'm gonna make a rectangle the size of my canvas here. And then I'm gonna fill it in with the pattern I just made. If I move this like this, it's gonna stretch that, but I can just click on that swatch again and it'll give me, it'll give me the pattern in proportion. All right, so from here with this rectangle selected, to make any edits, what I need to do here is go object expand, okay. And then I'm gonna to go to my pathfinder and merge. Now when I do this, there's going to be some shapes in here that don't have a fill-in color that we can't see. They're basically invisible. So I'm just going to make a rectangle here, make sure I have no stroke and no fill. Then I'll go to select, same, fill-in stroke. And then it'll select all those invisible shapes. And then I can just hit delete and delete those. And I just want to make sure when I click on this, this is all one group and it is. So now I'm going to copy that. And I can even lock this selection here just so it doesn't move while I'm making other edits. So now I'm going to take my rectangle tool and draw basically a shape that's the size of my artboard. And I'm going to change this to a gradient. So I need to go to my gradients palette here, click on a linear gradient. I'll make this minus 90. And I already have a gradient here that I edit, edited. So what you're going to have, what's probably going to happen when you get here is it's going to be black and white. And so you're going to have to go in here and select these little circles that are on this gradient over here and change it from grayscale, each one to, I like hue saturation brightness because I can see I'm moving just right around the color wheel here. And I can start out with whatever color I want. So I'm changing this black color that's on the top. And so what I want to do is I'm going to start in the purple range here. And then I'm going to just add more colors that it's going to change to. So I'll start with this one in the purplish range. Actually, I did that backwards. This one's in the purplish range. And so the next one is I'm just going to move along the color will and make that one kind of pinkish. Then we'll add another one. And I'm just moving let's see get rid of that. So we're gonna start with this purple, make it a little bit of a lighter purple. We're gonna add this and we're gonna just push this into the blue. We'll add one more here. We'll make that one greenish. And we're going to make this last one yellow. And all of these, I can slide the colors here to change the distance, but then also you'll see these little diamonds and that will also push the gradient between two colors uh, into different positions. So, if this is how I want it, then I can go object, arrange, send to back. And I have that. Now, I want this to be a lighter color, so I'm gonna go ahead and unlock all. And with that selected, I'm just gonna change the color, make it kind of a dark purplish color. And now I'm ready to add a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna select all and divide. Now divide, what that's doing is it's taking this, these two shapes and basically cookie cutter, like basically doing like a cookie cutter sort of thing. So now these scales are all selectable separately. 
So with my direct selection tool, I can go in here and select individual scales and make them variations of the colors that we used, but we're gonna make them lighter. So almost like if they're shimmering or something like that, you know, like how you see scales and they're not just a flat color. They just sort of have a, a look to them where some of them are lighter, some of them are darker. And we're not gonna do too much of that detail right now just for the sake of this video, but um, you can go ahead and adjust these to your liking and however you think looks good. Maybe find some reference pictures and see what those look like in other illustrations and stuff, but make them your own and do your own thing with them. Okay, I want to make this actually a little bit darker again. So I'm just going to select this and we'll make this a little darker here. Now we can be done here or we can do one more step. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that copy we made earlier and we're going to paste it in place. And now what that's going to do is it's just going to paste a copy in the exact same place on the artboard. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to make this a lighter color again. And you're going to see why in a second. We don't want it to be too dark. And with that done, we're just going to move it and offset it a little bit. So it's overlapping about like that. And then I'm going to go effect, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll make this about 10 pixels. Now I'm going to go to my transparency here and I'm going to turn this into a multiply. Now what multiply is going to do is it's just going to, uh, basically any color that's on top of it's going to make it darker. And we're going to turn the opacity down a little bit on there. Now we're going to just move this backwards. So we're going to go object, arrange, send backwards. And that's all the way in the back. That's not good. Oh, here's what we need to do here. We need to select these original scales. All right, so what I need to do is, ooh, hold on. Is select our original, which is the scales and the gradient, and then we're gonna ungroup those. So now I should be able to select my, um, the thing we just made here with the Gaussian blur. And now we should be able to move it backwards. And now it's be now it's behind. It's behind our outlines. And so now what we have is our outlines, we have a little drop shadow, and then we have our filled in scales. And you can use this and make an all over pattern. You can fill in just different objects with those. If you draw like, let's say a mermaid tail and you can fill them in with your pattern and you're ready to go. And you can reuse this pattern wherever you need. So I can even like type a letter here. Let's make this something like impact. Here, we'll make this nice and big. Okay, now for our fill, let's so if we have this and for my fill in, I can go to my swatches here and just make it that scale pattern.
and we have our pattern again that we can start with. So hopefully this is something you can use. Hopefully this is something that you found to be helpful. Um, let me know if you have anything else you'd like to see. You can join the Facebook group that's linked in the description and we can talk about design and we can do some critiques or whatever. I uh, hope you got some use out of this. Hope you liked it and we'll see you on the next one.